So I got a Jeep Patriot in this week for a no heat condition in the cab. It's been to the dealer. They've spent a small fortune replacing every single cooling part and uh, they're still not fixed. So the dealer told them it's the heater core. That's all it can be. So the customer brought it in to me. Uh, they denied any uh, diagnosis, said just change the heater core because the dealer says that's what it is. And of course, it's not working. Now. So all I did was I went right to the heater core. Uh, this hose on the left here is the outlet. I uh, pulled that off, started the vehicle, and uh, coolant was puking out. And the reason I took that hose off is when the vehicle was running, that hose was really cold, which is uh, pretty much means a blocked heater core, but the coolant's puking out, so I know there's no restriction. So what I did is I followed that hose all the way down, and it goes to the oil cooler. Uh, so now here, I've already got the lines off, but uh, I took that uh, front line off, so the one that I'm pointing to is the one coming from the heater core. And then that front line right there is uh, the outlet of the oil cooler. So I pulled that off, started the vehicle, and I had coolant was just dripping out. So that kind of tells me there's a restriction in the oil cooler. It should be free flowing. So uh, what I did was I actually disconnected both hoses and I bypassed the heater or the oil cooler altogether and then I started it up and I had tons of heat in the cab. So that told me right there, hey, there's a restriction in the oil cooler that's not allowing uh, the coolant flow, AKA no heat in the cab. Um, so yeah, the dealer didn't even bother to check this. I mean, it was a super quick diagnosis. Customer could have saved themselves thousands of dollars uh, if they just got a proper diagnosis. So don't always trust the dealers, guys. So uh, I went and got myself a new uh, oil cooler. Uh, Dodge was the only one that had it. So uh, it's a 12 millimeter hex socket that you need to change it. Uh, it's super easy to change. You got to take those two coolant lines off. So you're going to lose some coolant and you remove the oil filter and you put that socket in there and uh, it threads out and the uh, whole oil cooler comes down. There's an O-ring on the back. Uh, just lubricate it and put the new one on. Uh, here's the part number from Dodge if anybody's interested. Um, yeah, it's not a very hard repair. So once you got the old one out, uh, it's gonna kind of look like this. Sorry, I didn't get a video of removing it, uh, but it'll look like, you know, just like that, there'll be a threaded end. Um, it's not torqued very tight. So yeah, there's that collar, it pops right out once you unscrew it. Uh, regular threads, make sure that O-ring isn't stuck up there. Uh, just give it a quick wipe, uh, grab your new part, and uh, yeah, put it together just like you took it off after lubricating that ring. Yeah, and you just put your old, new, old or new oil filter back on and uh, leave the cooling system and you should be good to go. Uh, it's not really a DIY video, it's just more to show that, hey, you know, even dealers get things wrong. Uh, this customer, I feel bad for them. They could have, you know, saved themselves, you know, I think the heater core was like $1,200 with labor, uh, you know, involved removing the dash. So guys, don't always trust the dealer, you know, it's always good to get a second opinion. And yeah, if you guys have any issues, comment down below and I can uh, always answer. Thanks.